It's already day three of training camp for the Baltimore Ravens, and today we got a lot of positive and encouraging updates from the team. Marlon Humphrey has something very interesting to say about his career, and Kyle Hamilton, the modesty and humility is just through the roof. Well, we got plenty to talk about with the team. We're going to go over all of that. Before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video, click the thumbs up button. When you do that, it helps out the channel a whole lot, more than you realize. And I appreciate the fact that y'all been doing that like crazy. I appreciate y'all supporting the channel like crazy. Uh, also, subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Now, somebody who's been missing everything up to this point when it comes to training camp has been our guy, Lamar Jackson. He's dealing with whatever the sickness is. The doctors, they said, no, Lamar, you can't practice. He's not cleared yet. And Harbaugh did say that, hey, while he's not cleared yet, he should be back soon. It's just a matter of time. He's getting closer to returning, but the doctors, they have to clear him first. So whatever Lamar Jackson is dealing with, it has been serious enough to where it's really kept him out. Like, usually with Lamar Jackson, this is how you know it's like something different. Usually when we hear about Lamar Jackson's sickness, uh, it'll keep him out a day, maybe two days out of practice. But then he'll be right back. But with this one, it, it's been three days, and hopefully it's not three days and counting, but... Better to be safe than sorry and be extra precautious, especially since it's happening now. And there's a lot less pressure for him to be out there. Of course, you still want him out there because this is the time where they're ramping up everything. But uh, it's better for this to be going on now than later on and especially during the season. So shout out to Lamar. Hopefully uh, he'll be back very, very soon uh, so he can get back with the squad. Now, somebody who also... Missed a good amount of time, but last season, throughout the season, uh, that was Marlon Humphrey. Of course, Marlon Humphrey missed the first four games of the season with a foot injury, and then uh, he was like in and out of the lineup periodically throughout. Um, but Marlon Humphrey, um, even though last year he did miss a good amount of time, uh, even though last year I know so much of us remember that George Pickens play on his first game back where Marlon Humphrey got burnt uh, for the touchdown. He gave it up. Uh, Marlon Humphrey still is a good cornerback he can still play in just like a lot of the players in the secondary he brings versatility now at Marlon Humphrey he talked about the injuries from last year and he said that uh he wishes that he would have handled the injuries a bit different uh last season but he said he's a little lighter this year and he's feeling good and he said he's right now he's about 10 pounds lighter than he was last year said that he's at about 190 and last year he was about 200 so Marlon Humphrey gonna be a little slimmed down and I guess I, well, the reason I think it is he, he was looking like, look, look, man, I ain't trying to get burnt. I, I, I ain't trying to get burnt. Uh, he also talked about how this year he'll be playing both inside and outside corner. So as an inside corner, like, Marlon Humphrey could do it. He can do both. He can do both, and he can do both at a high level. So, again, just having somebody that's like that, that can do so much, that just makes a big difference on your football team. But Marlon Humphrey said something that was really interesting that I never thought about with him before. And I guess, like, man, we were really getting up there in age, and we really getting there to this point in his career. Marlon Humphrey talked about how he's always thought that he'll move to safety at some point in his career, but he hasn't had to talk with the coaches yet. And it's like, oh, whoa, like, are we at that point? I don't think we're close to being there yet for him to be a safety. But would that be something that he would be able to do? I, I think he definitely could do it. I think Marlon Humphrey would be more of the strong safety type than a free safety. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, in my opinion, is not the best deep ball tracker, but he's more of a physical guy who can cover. And he would sort of be like, not like Kyle Hamilton, but similar to Kyle Hamilton to where you could line him up at different places. Marlon, over the years, he has gotten so much better as a blitzer. Uh, he already can cover. He can tackle. He's very physical. He can knock the ball out. So you could do so many different things with Marlon Humphrey as a safety. But usually when corners make that switch to safety, that's when they start slowing down. Marlon Humphrey, even with the injuries last year, I this is my opinion. I don't feel like he's slowing down. So I don't think we even need to have that conversation yet. The fact that he brought that up, I was like, oh, hold up now, Marlo. Now, um, Marlon Humphrey, yeah, he did have some down plays last year. But as a cornerback, you're always going to have some plays that don't look so good. But there was a game where he was just lighting it up. Just talking to my guy, uh, Jonathan, about this yesterday when he asked me, what do you think Marlon Humphrey's best game of the year last year was? I was like, hmm, well, it wasn't the Steelers game. Certainly <laughs> was not the Rams game. Ooh, that was a rough one. Um, but I was like, I, I can't think of it. And he said, oh, it was the, uh, the 49ers game. 
The 49ers game on December 25th last year. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he was balling that game. And he talked about how Marlon Humphrey, he got the pick for himself. He even uh, was very physical, knocked out Debo Samuel, jumped up, tipped the pick up in the air for Kyle Hamilton to catch it. And speaking of Kyle Hamilton, we talked about how the modesty is through the roof. The humility is unmatched. Because Kyle Hamilton, <laughs> like, oh, really, Kyle? Like, he said that there's a lot of plays that he left out on the field last year. Huh? Really? Like, yeah, like, really? All the plays that you made super duper Kyle, literally at every single position on defense, and you left plays out there? All right, now, Kyle. Again, I appreciate you being modest, being humble and all that. Because you don't want to get on your high horse, which I respect. I admire that so much. I don't really think you left many plays out there on the field. But anyway, no, no, I, I, I get it, though, man. Kyle Hamilton just, um, just again, being modest and not getting cocky, not getting arrogant at all. And, and that's a beautiful thing. But just saying that he, even as great as he is now, feels like he can still be better. Um, he talked about how he had a good year last year, uh, but now he want to continue to step it up both as a player, but as a leader, too. And when he said that, I said, hold up now. That, this, this dude in his third year, third year. When you think about the leaders on the Baltimore Ravens, especially on defense, obviously you think Roquan Smith. You also think uh, Marlon Humphrey as well. And those are the guys who are more the vocal leaders, the outspoken guys. But Kyle Hamilton, if he could step into the role of a leader in year three, year three, like that would really be saying something because obviously by his play, um, he is well respected. And, and as a leader, it would be hard, in my opinion, for people to respect the leader if they didn't have the actions of a leader. Uh, so with Kyle Hamilton, obviously the play is there. He could do his thing on the field. No doubt about that. But him stepping up to take on that leadership role with the team, that's a beautiful thing. Speaking of leadership, uh, I've told you all this before that I was somebody that didn't appreciate the leadership on the Baltimore Ravens as much as I should have. Specifically speaking of in the Ray Lewis days, like love Ray Lewis, love his energy, love his passion for the game, uh, love the pregame speeches, the postgame speeches, all of that, how he would get this team fired up because he would get us as fans fired up too. We were ready to put on some pads and go crazy for the Ravens defense as well. But when he left that's when I really appreciated everything that leadership brings to a football team. Yoda, Justin Houston. Uh, he was a big acquisition for the Baltimore Ravens a few years back. Uh, and then a couple years after that, they drafted Adafi away in the first round of the draft. And Adafi away talked about how with Justin Houston, he taught him different things. He showed him how he needs to move. He showed him what he should do, the ins, the outs of being a pass rusher. And he learned so much from him. Now, Adafi away is his time. Jadavian Clowney is gone. While Kyle Vinoy is back, he's not going to be a three-down linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. Adafi away, this is your time. But today, apparently, Adafi away, he got the message. Because it was said that Adafi away was in a backfield literally all day long long harassing the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. So with that being said, they said that John Harbaugh, he had to take a moment to pull Adafi away to the side and tell him, chill out, calm down, relax. These are your teammates. These are your friends. These are your family. You got to chill out, man. So that's a good sign because Adafi away, he went into this offseason a little murky. There was a lot of questions about Adafi away. We, we were questioning him, and I'm sure he was questioning a lot of his future with the Baltimore Ravens as well. But they picked up the fifth-year option. Just like we talked about with Rashad Bateman, they gave him a confidence boost. They gave Adafi away that confidence boost as well. So with him being in the backfield like he was today, that's what we want to see. We know he's not going to get a sack every single play. We know he's not going to get a sack every single pass in play. But we just want to see Adafi away really turn it on. It's there. It's there, but they just really got to get it out of them. So hopefully this is the year that Adafi away turns that corner. Now somebody else who I'm sure has been really annoying to the Baltimore Ravens offense during training camp thus far is Arthur Millett. Today, in day three, he got his third interception of training camp. So, I mean, he's averaging a pick every practice. 
So I'm sure Josh Johnson probably be getting frustrated with it, like, Arthur, come on now, like, move out, like, I'm trying to do this, but it's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful start for him. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they signed him late last offseason, and obviously they like what they saw from him during the year, because this offseason, they re-signed him early on. They said, we're making sure we take care of this early, because we want him on our team. And if Arthur Millette can keep this up, Keep it up through preseason. I'm, I'm sure he's not going to play much in preseason. But keep it up in the regular season. Too. I mean, like, hey, if you want to average an interception a game in a regular season, too, go for it. We won't be mad. Before we continue, make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Special shout out to all the team. Keep it clean. Patrons, you want to become a patron? You can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And shout out to all the team. Keep it clean. Channel members, if you would like to become a channel member, you will click the join button right next to the channel. So our first question came from my guy, BB. He said, do you think the latest two safety signings are an indication of something wrong with Kyle Hamilton? Maybe he won't be ready for the season opener. I might be looking into this wrong, but it seems odd to sign that much depth at one position if something wasn't going on your thoughts. No, not at all. Nah, not at all. I know Kyle Hamilton, he did have the um the elbow cleanup surgery. Uh, but no. I Kyle Hamilton is just fine. Uh, I think now while he did have that elbow surgery and, and I haven't heard or seen anything about the Baltimore Ravens holding Kyle Hamilton back during training camp. Uh, but the better the, the the more quality depth you have at any position. If you can load up at any position, I say go for it, and especially if you can load up with familiarity. Like Daryl Worley, who they sign, is somebody that they know and they respect his game, somebody that can help on special teams as well. Eddie Jackson, they lost Geno Stone, so there was a role that needed to be filled for that third safety, and that's what Eddie Jackson is expected to do. And they got somebody like with Geno Stone when he was at free safety, not when he was at strong, but when he was at free safety, he was picking everything off. He would get a pick or two like every single week. He was doing his thing. So with Eddie Jackson, they want somebody to replace Geno Stone, who was also a ball hawk, who, who got a knack for finding the ball, who got a knack for force, forcing turnovers. So I don't think the, them signing the safeties is an indictment on Kyle Hamilton's health. I just think they really want to load up at the position for sure. Next question came from my guy, TJ. He said, all the hype, Super Bowl victory or nothing. I'm tired of it engraving. I'm tired of the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, John Harbaugh, and his excuses. Oh, he even he threw John Harbaugh and the people that you're tired of? He said, EDC and the mediocrity at wide receiver and the offense, period. We got enough on defense. No more defense. It's sickening to see us lose year after year after year in the playoffs because Harbaugh has some jacked up game plan to lose the game and hold Lamar back from being Lamar or simply just laying down to Andy Reid and the Chiefs. Like, we just can't beat them. I'm tired of it. Stop all the talking. Lock the doors and go destroy everything all the way to a Super Bowl victory. Bump the hype. Go win a Super Bowl. Shut up and go win a Super Bowl. Get Lamar Jackson a Super Bowl. Is Super Bowl victory or deuces. EDC and Hobbs, for Christ's sakes, get out of Baltimore. Wow. TJ. Ooh, you. All right. Even though that, that TJ my guy, though. But TJ, when he feeling a certain way, he going to let it be known. And he been doing this for years, man. It's been the same tune with him. So he's very consistent. And I respect it. So um, a couple of things he said throughout your not even question, but really a comment. He said he tired of it. It's Super Bowl victory or nothing. I agree right there. That is what needs to happen. It, it should have happened already, in my opinion. It hasn't to this point for several different reasons. But the main reason is just the Baltimore Ravens not being themselves. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens not sticking to what got them in the position that it got them to. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens just falling short for trying to be somebody else who they weren't during the season. So then they're, they're just trying to switch everything up come playoff time. We, we tired of seeing that. We tired of seeing that. And again, last year during the Houston game, it was like, oh, okay, hey, Ravens ain't doing the same old stuff no more. But then they played the Chiefs. And, oh, okay. Here we, there it is. Right on cue. So uh, I, I would say that's what that is. But um, he also said, I'm tired of the Chiefs. And he named all them players. He said he tired of John Harbaugh and his excuses. EDC and the mediocrity of wide receiver in the offense, period. He said, we got enough on defense. No more defense. So I see what he's saying because the Baltimore Ravens, they've been loading up on defense a lot. And I ain't mad at it. Like, I say load up wherever you can as much as you possibly can. Now, um, Wide receiver, he said he tired of the mediocrity at wide receiver. Baltimore Ravens this year 
they are really um, in put up or shut up mode when it comes to their wide receivers. Their top two wide receivers this year are going to be their two first round picks at wide receiver. Their first round pick from last year, Zay Flowers, and their first round pick from a couple years back, Rashad Bateman. I was somebody, I was hoping that they were going to bring in somebody else, a significant wide receiver, but they didn't. They didn't. So, they're like, oh, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we're rolling with, this is what it's going to be. I'm like, okay, all right, we'll see. It's a little, it, it can be a little scary sometimes when you think about it, but um, my guy Jonathan, he brought up a really good point that when I was talking to him yesterday, he talked about how with uh, Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews, they are two very dynamic tight ends, but with everything that the Baltimore Ravens lost at wide receiver, the type of offense that the Baltimore Ravens have right now, even with featuring Derrick Henry soon, um, Isaiah Likely can really help take the load off in the passing game uh, when it comes to the Ravens not having that wide receiver yet. I, I think Zay is definitely on his way. Hopefully, Rashad Bateman ends up being too. But when it comes to wide receiver, um, Isaiah Likely, not saying I like Isaiah Likely is going to be a wide receiver, but the production and the potential of the production that he can bring. Since now the Baltimore Ravens, they really know what they got in Isaiah Likely. So he can sort of sh share some of that, uh, the, 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 the worry, share some of that worry, y'all, for Ravens fans when it comes to, all right, we really need another wide receiver. Now, I, I still wouldn't mind if they got him, but Isaiah Likely, if they can really implement him the right way, because he's a mismatch. He's a dangerous mismatch. Um, and then you still got Mark Andrews, and you'll have a healthy Mark Andrews too. So Ravens, got a, they got a big opportunity to do some crazy stuff, man. And then there's Derrick Henry as well. So they got a big opportunity to do some crazy stuff. Um, that, but I do see what you're saying overall at the wide receiver position because it has been uh, lackluster overall. Overall, it is something that they could definitely improve on. ADC said that too. And, and he's tried some different things, some different ways, got a little creative with it. Um, the Odell Beckham Jr. signing last year, it was fun. And, hey, you got to do what you got to do to get your quarterback back, to get Lamar back. So that, that was something right there. But – um. They putting all their eggs into Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers this year. They really are. Uh, with Zay Flowers, I think every Ravens fan is comfortable with that. With Rashad Bateman, I know there's a lot of question marks. And Rashad Bateman, he'll even say he's he saying himself that there's a lot of question marks. He got to build trust with the team, with the coaching staff, with the front all. He got to build trust with them. So, like I said, it, it's put up or shut up for him. Like, and he knows that. Ravens know that. Like, but they, they rolling with him. So, let's hope for the best for him. Uh, he also talked about uh, year after year in the playoffs, Harbaugh got some jacked up game plan to lose the game and hold Lamar back from being Lamar. Now, this part right here, um, obviously, there's a game plan that is put in place every game. But, and we know how them game plans been going, uh, but at the same time, just because that is the plan, it doesn't mean that you cannot go off script. As Ravens fans, especially Ravens fans of uh, Lamar Jackson, we done seen Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews over the years, Hollywood Brown too. We done seen when they, they go off script a lot. They go off script a whole lot. And it works for the most part. So what I'm saying is that with the whatever game plan that they put in, it doesn't mean that Lamar, you know certainly Lamar Jackson ain't no robot. It ain't like, okay, coach, I will do that, and I will just do that. I will do that play, and that's it. I will do it exactly like that. No, because offensive line, it breaks down sometimes. Sometimes, hey, Lamar might slip. Sometimes it may be a bad handoff. Sometimes somebody might miss a block. Sometimes the receiver might get jammed up. Sometimes stuff happens to where you got to go off script. So, he had the ability to go off script and he did do some off script stuff. I mean, we saw where he had to, he threw the pass and he, he caught his own pass too. End up winning the play of the year at the ESPYs. So, um, it's just because there's a game plan. Now a game plan, it is still the majority of what the, the players do and what they try to get done, but they can still go off script as well. Now, of course you want that game plan to be where, Hey, this is what the game plan is, and oh, this oh, we got a good one. And you want that game plan to be executed at a high level because you want it to be a game plan that's going to make life easier for your team, whether offense, defense, special teams, and make it much harder for the opposing team. And sometimes it seems a lot of times Ravens do that. They they do that, especially in regular season. But then playoffs, and obviously playoffs is a completely different ball game. We don't want to sit up here and act like all right, the Ravens only lose because of themselves. 
It seems that way because they they get out of character. But you got to give the other teams credit as well, because we will certainly want that to happen if the Baltimore Ravens, when they win their playoff games, we want the other teams to give them credit. Um, so that part right there, it, it could sort of go up and down. But anyway, he said, um, just laying down to Andy Reid and the Chiefs like we just can't beat them. I'm tired of it. Stop all the talking. Lock the doors and go destroy everything all the way to Super Bowl victory. Now, I think I'm just going to assume when he talked about stop all the talking. I don't think he's a big fan of um, what Harbaugh has been saying at the pressers, really bigging up these players. He bigged up Lamar Jackson a couple days ago. Then he did it with Rashad Bateman uh, yesterday. And then today it was with Adafe away. Um, but he just – he don't want to hear no more of the talking. That's, he, he's tired of it. He just wants the players, again, put up or shut up. I think that's what my guy TJ is on. Uh, and I respect it. I mean, but they got to do the pressers. So we, we got to hear him talk. Um, and he also said, bump the hype, go win a Super Bowl, shut up, go win a Super Bowl. I ain't telling no players or no coach, I ain't telling nobody shut up right now, but I, I get what you're saying. Forget all the hype. Like, yeah, the Ravens have been a hype team. They've been a team a lot of people have been excited about, obviously, but they haven't fulfilled the, the job. They haven't finished the job. So they still got work to do. I right, said, get Lamar Jackson Super Bowl. Is Super Bowl victory or deuces? EDC and Hobbs, for Christ's sakes, get out of B-more. So, but EDC, no. I, EDC, no. I, I don't think EDC is anywhere close to being gone from Ravens. I mean, I really don't even think Harbaugh is either. But what I will say is that I, I do feel like if, and I feel like this last year too, uh, if Baltimore Ravens fall short, if they come up short, especially depending on how. Hopefully, we, didn't, we don't even got to have this conversation. But if they were to fall short again this year, then Harbaugh's cheeks need to be sweaty. That seat needs to be hot. 